Welcome everybody to Super Comic Fun Time. Uh, my name is MapleBob23 and today is August 28th, 2017. Uh, today, if you've been on Twitter, you've seen the hashtag Kirby100. And um, what that means is today, if Jack Kirby, also known as King Kirby, had uh, still been alive, he would be 100 years old today. Uh, he partnered up with a person named Joe Simon to create Captain America because he wanted to punch Hitler. And um, he partnered up with uh, Stan Lee to create such iconic characters as the Fantastic Four, the Incredible Hulk, um, the Mighty Thor. Uh, and then he's also known, he, he also worked for um, DC and created the uh, New Gods, which there's a huge omnibus coming out later this year, which I'm really excited about. He also created such characters as Commandy, which I've never read, but he's very popular. I had pre-ordered the Commandy omnibus and then it was canceled and then it came back with even more pages. And so I pre-ordered it again and I forget when it's coming out. At any rate, I don't right now have any Kirby specific um, properties to show you, but what I have is this box of um, unopened comic books. I bought this uh, more than a year ago, uh, more or less to do an unboxing for my channel, which my old channel is MapleBob23, which is just going to be a personal channel. I started doing comic book videos, but uh, I really want to do more dedicated to simply comic books and uh, not just like my nature pictures or whatever else I might have put up there. Um, so this was, this is meant to be a comic book party channel. And the thing I want to focus on would be omnibuses. Uh, they're, they're my favorite right now. I don't really keep up with the um, uh, single issues. Uh, I, I have read some, like I was very taken with Charles Soule's um, uh, letter 44 for a while and when uh, Marvel came out of S Secret Wars 2015 I picked up some of the Iron Man and Doctor Strange books and I think a couple of the other first issues but I didn't really stick with it. I, I do prefer the omnibuses now. When I was a kid I couldn't imagine such a thing. I, I It would be sacrilege to me because it's like oh you get these comics, you get these great ads. I have no idea what um, comic book ads are now because mostly I bought digital. At any rate, there's a bunch of great stuff coming out in omnibus form from Kirby. And right now, if you go to your local uh, comic book shop, um, Marvel has, what is it called? It's called the True Believer series. And you can pick up some first issues of things that Kirby, Jack Kirby has done, like Thor. And there's like a horror magazine, which Marvel was doing before it was really Marvel and that features the first appearance of Groot and um, they look like a bunch of fun stuff but I don't have those either. What I have here is a box. I don't know exactly what's in the box except that it's comic books. I bought this off of um, Groupon maybe a year ago. Maybe I bought it off of something else. There were like two competing services. At any rate, um, this could be the El Capone's Vault with nothing interesting or it could be there's uh, there was there was promised like a couple of, of um, Silver Age books that would be um, how you say interesting or you know they didn't really say they were, they were they didn't guarantee anything valuable they just said there were a couple of Silver Age books thrown in and it was like a twenty five issue uh, twenty five um, comic books and so let's see what we got. So I've got here my um, trusty X-Acto knife, and I think I'm going to put, tilt the camera down so we can see the box, and I'll probably move behind it. I might have to, um, since my camera is my iPhone, I might have to mess with the uh, camera a little bit. When I, if I do move behind it, let's see how it works. So, ooh, what have we got here? This looks exciting. We start with Superman. Now, Jack Kirby had drawn for Superman. I, uh, I'm a fan of other comic book channels, and I was watching um, somebody today, I think it was uh, Captain Cummings, and um, he talked about how they would uh, erase Jack Kirby's art book for the face. So let's see what this is. Um, six, 
62 Superman Grusik Paschio and Merino. I know nothing about this. It looks kind of cool. I like, uh, I love the artwork. Uh, Superman sitting on a moon. It reminds me a little bit of The Little Prince, if you ever read The Little Prince, and he comes from a different planet, and all the planets in there are drawn as kind of small things. Um, highly recommend The Little Prince if you haven't read it. I tried to watch the Netflix show, and it was not very good. In my opinion, it just wasn't The Little Prince. They tried to update it or something, and I just wanted the, uh, the how you say, the original. You know, that's what I like. Um, and, you know, I read The Little Prince as an adult. I, not, you know, like, um, maybe I was 18, somebody gave it to me. Excuse me. <coughs> somebody gave it to me as a birthday present. And I thought, what are they thinking of me, giving me a kid's book for a birthday present? But then I read it, and I was totally enchanted. And so I was a little disappointed in the um, animated feature. So what is this? Oh, Batman and Superman. Oh, this is a New 52. New 52, number three of Batman and Superman. So that could be interesting. I uh, have read, like, some collected editions of uh, the New 52. I read Superman Doomed, and I read, like, just about uh, half of the Scott Snyder run of Batman. I love the Court of Owls and uh, the Night of the Owls. And I think I read through um, a death, the Death of the Family. So that was kind of interesting. So what is this? Shadow War, another DC book. And I think when I ordered this, here, look at me. Uh, when I ordered the this box, I think you had a choice of DC, Marvel, or Split, so I think this box is going to be split, and they might have just put all the DC books uh, on top, so I don't think it's going to be all DC, but who knows, maybe the order screwed up, and who cares, it's fun, so um, yeah, Shadowhawk, Shadow War, the Big Bang was just the beginning, this actually sounds very interesting, again, some very interesting artwork, I wonder when this is from, it's got the UPC code at the bottom, so it didn't come from a comic book store. It's still got the um, comic book code, so it's probably pre-2000. It was, oh, it was a direct sales, though. You know, I might be confused. Like, um, Marvel always had, like, Spider-Man in the corner, at least in the 80s when I was actively creating it. So, 1994. Very interesting. Very interesting. Here's the opening page to this one. I just love this artwork. I... You know, I was not a DC kid growing up. I was a Marvel kid, and I was very prejudiced, and I think probably rightfully so, but uh, around the 80s, maybe the early 90s, Vertigo and stuff, I'm reading a lot of that stuff now. Right now, I'm in the last volume of The Invisibles by Grant Morrison, and that is a very strange book. I tried to do... Um, I tried to do a video about that when I first started reading it, but it turned out to be uh, just about as pretentious as a lot of people feel Grant Morrison is, so I just uh, jettisoned that video. So anyways, this artwork is just beautiful. I, uh, yeah, I've got to keep the glare out. I just love the sunglasses. I don't know what this creature is, but, you know, it's definitely a female. Um, very interesting. This... Oh, and you know what I like? You know, this is like my era. This is like, you know, kind of like more of the pulp newsy stuff, and maybe it's the four color process. I prefer that to, like, you know, today a lot of the uh, comics just look fake. You know, I, I, I don't know how else to say it. It's just like it's all computer drawn. Okay, this one is called Valor, another Superman one, another great cover. So, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm looking at it in the camera, and it looks backwards, so hopefully it'll look right when I, uh, when you actually are viewing this. So hopefully, like, I figured out how to get a full video on, and I won't have to, um, excuse me, bodily functions. Uh, if I can edit that out, I'll edit that out. Um, ooh, Green Lantern. This Tangent Comics, Green Lantern, I... I don't know anything about this, but, um, you know, again, beautiful artwork. Um, let's take a look inside. Okay, this is more of a modern book. You can see it's the glossy paper, and uh, it is, like, less of the four-color process. And, you know, the artwork's, you know, the artwork is probably great, but it just is, everything kind of blends into 
everything else. And I just really like that old kind, you know, it's like what you grow up with is what you like, right? So that's all there is to it. And I do enjoy like the modern comics I've read, Letter 44. And the artwork has never been a big stopper for me. Um, and going through uh, The Invisibles, I do find like I just pause on the artwork and try to take it all in. And I know Grant Morrison is this really deep guy and I, I've read his book and so I try to like see if he's like sending any messages through the, uh, the artwork. Uh, and yeah, I'm in the last volume of The Invisibles and I can't wait to see how it ends. It's almost a little unsatisfying because it just seems like everything is just getting started, you know? Ah. So what is this? Over the Edge. Oh, here we go, a Marvel book. Marvel Edge. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube stuff. I probably have heard of Edge, but I, I don't know. Let's see what this is. Ghost Rider. Wow. Again, direct edition, so, you know, that's fine. Uh, when comic book shops first started getting uh, started in the late 70s and early 80s, you would go to, like, uh, dang, I wish I could remember the place I used to go to. It wasn't really a comic book sh stop, uh, shop, but it was a, a hobby store, and they always had, like, Spider-Man in the corner, like a Spider-Man head in place of the UPC, and that just really caused uproar in the collecting community and I really don't know if it makes a difference. Uh, I, I, I collected and I wanted my comic books to be valuable but um, you know I, I don't know if they ever turned out that way. At any rate so yeah direct direct edition very interesting. Ghost Rider I used to like this is probably isn't Johnny Blaze that's the gross Ghost Rider I grew up with. Johnny Blaze was very kind of an interesting character where he wasn't very interesting when I was reading him, but you go back to the earlier issues, the origin story where, you know, Mes Mephistopheles, he makes a deal to save his father and stuff, which if you've seen the Ghost Rider movie, the first one, which I don't think is too bad. I think the worst thing about it is Nicolas Cage is too old to be playing Johnny Blaze, but, you know, it's a movie, so you forgive it, and at that time, there were, Marvel Studios hadn't really been doing a their own movies. They hadn't really kind of set this uh, new standard, so I thought it was fine for, for what it was. I thought um, Ghost Rider 2 was kind of a train wreck, but I guess he had the uh, the chain in that one, and they, they were probably combining different myths of different Ghost Riders, different characters. So here we have Black Panther, number 49. Uh, you know, I don't want to take these out of the uh, covers, but I'm going to do it for this one because I'm curious about when it was written. And uh, uh, Got Milk. There's still a Got Milk ad, so I'm going to say uh, it's the 90s. I'm going to say 1992. Let's see. Let's see if this is from 1992. Oh, look, it's got kind of the paper I like and the art I like, so that's kind of cool. So, yeah. Now I have to flip back to the page. This is actually more sophisticated art um, than most. So maybe this is right on the cusp. So maybe it's later than 92. Oh, it's 2002, much later. I was 10 years off. 10 years off. Wow. So let me put it back in this package. Da, da, da. I guess I'll put it back in this package later because you don't want to see that. Now we've got the Punisher. The Punisher. I, uh, I remember, like, I was a big Spider-Man fan when I was growing up, and that was my first introduction to, this, to, to the Punisher. So when I watched The Tick and they had the character that's kind of like the Punisher in uh, remission, trying to not to be the Punisher, uh, I, I, you know, I, I knew what they were talking about. Uh, at the time that I first encountered the, pun the Punisher, he was trying not to kill people anymore, and he was using dumb dumb bullets. But, you know, the Punisher actually came out of, like, a uh, film movement in the 1970s, which um, I think the basic inspiration was Death Wish, which was a Charles Bronson movie. It was um, Jeff Goldblum's first film scene, and he played, like, he had a bit part of uh, a rapist. He raped um, Charles Bronson's wife in uh, Death Wish. That movie is very intense, and I, I, I enjoy it. I love all the Death Wish movies, even though they get kind of, like, 
worse. They get way more campy. The first one is a, is a serious movie. And then they do a second one, and that one I don't like that much. Then they do the third one, and it's really bad. Marina Citrus is in it from uh, Star Trek uh, Next, Next Generation. And uh, it's kind of bad, but it's fun. And he, he blows out uh, a bad guy with a, with a bazooka in that movie. And so it's like way over the top. It's way more camp. Uh, and then uh, there's Death Wish 4, which I don't remember that much. And then uh, near the end of his life, Charles Bronson did like, I think, a fifth Death, Death Wish movie. And it's pretty bad, but it's like, again, campy fun. And, but, you know, probably the first is my favorite, though. So that's probably more than you wanted to know. Oh, this is number one, November. Oh, this is a Marvel Knights uh, imprint. So that was the more adult version of Marvel. So what we have here next is Doctor Strange, one of my favorite characters. I was a bit disappointed in the movie. I don't know if you guys saw the movie. Um, the biggest problem I had with it, it seemed like they weren't willing to commit to the magic which I guess you could see in Thor where, you know, magic is just science that you don't understand yet. But the whole idea of that um, sling ring, that did not appeal to me at all. I think if you're a master magician, you should just be able to open a portal. And I did like, you know, there, there was a, like a lot of, I did like about the movie, but overall I think it was one of the weaker Marvel movies. Um, what we have next is, oh, this is nice. Now they've got the year on it. So this is um, the Silver Surfer from um, April 1997. For whatever reason, this is, uh, so this is like 20 years ago. Um, years with a seven, always I, I always seem to remember as my best years. 1987, I was in the Army, and um, I just remember that being a very good year. Uh, 1997? I don't remember anything about that year right now, but it just seemed like, you know, I enjoyed that year a lot. So, yeah, and it's 2017, and I've changed my uh, YouTube to a new channel, and uh, I'm doing this, and it's Jack Kirby's 100th birthday, so how could you go wrong? So next we have another DC book, which is JSA. That's all it says. You see Hawkman there, and then um, you see... I don't know who that blue guy is. I'm not very familiar with DC, but here we have uh, the Flash. That's Jay Garrick Flash because he's wearing the pith helmet. So, yeah, I think J JSA is more or less the, uh, the, older, the older Justice League. It's the Justice Society of America. And here's a JLA. Do, do I know what year this is from, from the cover? It's still got a comics code. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's 250. I'm not sure. That's probably like early 2000s, late 90s. Uh, here we go. This is a very cool cover. It's like Superman as a skeleton, and who else? Probably Hawkman. Yeah, probably Hawkman. I'm not 100% sure because here he's wearing gold, and here this guy's wearing red. So I don't really know. Is it supposed to be Batman, do you think? And then, because this is Wonder Woman, and, oh no, there's Batman there, so Batman, so who the heck is that guy with the red, uh, you know, the red cross there? I, I don't know. I guess I'll have to read it to find out. But yeah, another comics code, so this is uh, probably pre-2000 or 2002. Starman, hmm. Oh, this is, this one's only a dollar, so that's probably very early 90s. 91 or 92, you know, it, yeah, the artwork for this, uh, it looks dumb, <laughs> it, it's not my favorite, it's like, you see this guy, he's just kind of leaning out the window, he's got a big smile on his face, I bet this is a fun book, but what is it called, Starman Field Testing, oh, that's why he's smiling, it's so you know that he's not a bad guy, so Starman is probably, uh, working for the military or but no there's a woman being kidnapped there I don't know it's just weird the way that guy is smiling and he's kind of tilted out casually firing the weapon at this starman guy I don't know what it means <laughs> okay let's look at the next one so um, Connor Hawk dragon blood hmm that sounds interesting first issue of six January 07 so yeah that artwork is not bad 
I'm not sure what, you know, I guess I don't know who these characters are. It's like, I guess the dragon must be a good guy because otherwise, who's he firing his arrow at? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's okay artwork. I, I don't know what this is about from looking at it, but I like dragons. I like dragon's blood, and it looks kind of cool. So it's just, yeah, it's a little confusing. Ooh, here's the flash. The Flash, $1, so probably early 90s. The cover art looks very cool. The woman looks terrified. Is she a crazy cat lady? No, I don't know. I'm not too sure who she is, but the Flash is grabbing at her. And, yeah, so whatever defeated him, it's probably very terrifying. I thought she might be a cat lady because I didn't look very closely, and uh, just the way her hands are crossed there, I thought she might be holding a cat, but... Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but this looks like a very interesting one. It's number 42. So, yeah. Then here on the back, we have a Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs uh, ad. So, very interesting. That would be a fun one to read. Next, we have The Adventures of Superman. Again, some very cool art. It seems like a lot of the Superman ones we've opened in this box so far have very good art. So, um... Yeah, he's getting some kind of hug. I wonder if that's the parasite. Um, I'm not that uh, familiar with Superman's mythos. Like I said, <coughs> I was a Marvel kid. and uh, But but yeah, very interesting art. I do know the parasite from the uh, Spider-Man, Superman team-ups, which I have. I really wanted to read those back in the day. I remember seeing that, and it's like, you know, Mostly I was getting my comic books from supermarkets and, and drugstores, so um, when I would go to a bookstore, I would see, like, or Marvel would, like, have ads about Superman versus uh, Spider-Man, but they didn't really have the book available, at least not as far as I know. Hmm, this one actually, I have no idea. Oh, it's another... Okay, so I'm sorry I got cut off by my iPhone because I ran out of space. So I deleted some, a uh, bunch of podcasts, and we'll go on for a little bit longer, but there's a lot of books in here still, a lot of books. There's, there's that many books left. So I think I'm just going to do a few more books, and... Uh, then we'll just call it, oh, Lord, I'm going to wrestle with them to get them back down there. So, anyways, this one looked interesting, and I, this is the one I was talking about before I got cut off, and uh, hopefully I have a good enough editor that you won't see that part, but um, here we have a little note, somebody put pre-darkness uh, within, pre-darkness within, Lobo 2, so I don't know if these are first appearances, but... Again, this is like from the early 90s. It's a dollar. So it would be very, very, very fun. And this one, I do like the I do like the artwork. I prefer this one to the other Starman book. Um, it's so weird. I'm looking at it backwards, and it looks like it ends with a Z, but then nothing else makes sense. So what does it say? Eclipso, Doom, Starman. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read because there's some black lettering against red. Then we have a copy of the flash which there's a price tag on here so this was going in a comic book store for 325 um yeah you can probably if you're like a long time dc fan so it's like 299 american and here it's uh oh yeah 2007 so so yeah i don't know about this artwork this is like it just looks like you know, somebody took paint and kind of smeared it on there. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't like that artwork very much. Then we have a JLA book. This one, I, I do like the artwork just looking at it. So you have like some kind of crow with this red eye. And you see Superman. And you see Wonder Woman. And you see some guy I probably should know but don't. And the flash is peeking back here. And this is um, issue 66, July 02. So, hmm. Oh, here's another flash. And uh, this is a very good cover. It's number 219, still 
uh, the comic code authority. Uh, again, I don't know DC characters that well, so like here you have um, probably Reverse Flash in the yellow, you have Flash, Wonder Woman, and this Tiger Woman who reminds me of Marvel's Tigress, but uh, yeah, I don't really know who she is. But it's a very cool cover. It makes me want to read the book. So it's uh, Johns, Justino, Livze, and Wong. And yeah, 225, so sometime in the 2000s. But well, look at that logo. It can't be too recent in Comic Code's authority. So I don't know pricing well enough. 225, when would that have been? Maybe like late 90s, 98, 99? Hmm. But no, I definitely like that cover. And then we have another Flash. This is just Flash on the cover. It's Jay Garrick Flash. And we are at JSA, the Justice Society, Infinite Crisis, an Infinite Crisis book. So this will be interesting. I really do enjoy Infinite Crisis. I read that last year. And um, I really like 52. I like the aftermath of Infinite Crisis better than I like Infinite Crisis. And I like the lead up to Infinite Crisis. But Infinite Crisis was good too. But yeah, this... I don't know if this was part of the collections I've read, so that'll be fun. Ooh, look at this cover. This is a beautiful cover. Oh my god, it's Booster Gold, Chromatic Chaos. Wow, look at that. Now this is like, oh, this is like something I'd like to hang in my room. Again, we have the Comics Code Authority. This one is 75 cents. So, oh, it's August 87. I, I just saw it up here. That is beautiful. Now, the 80s it was, was my era. By 87, I wasn't reading that many, but I was still picking up a few occasionally. Again, Marvel, Marvel boy. So, Marvel fanboy. Hawk and Dove. Hmm. Oh, another one from the 80s. This is from 89. So, I think Hawk is, I mean, Dove is a girl in here. Yeah. So, I think Hawk and Dove were originally a guy and a guy, but then they changed it up at some point. But... That's, that's very nice artwork. It's very interesting. So let's just see how many we can get through. There's still a lot here. I'm just going to just pine through this. So here we go. Another JS, JSA. Um, this is pretty good artwork. You have Shazam. You have, again, Jay Garrick Flash. And, um, oh, that's the original Green Lantern there in the, in the center, taking center stage. Hawkman, I'm not sure who, oh, that's probably Dr. Fate over there, so yeah, very interesting. Here we go, Countdown, 47, so this is probably Countdown to Final Crisis, so here. Now, this artwork is pretty good. I don't know if I like it as a comic book art, but, uh, you know, I think there might be two, no, there's only one book in there. It just feels a little heavier, so this is a series I've been very interested to read, and this is... Uh, the Countdown to Final Crisis, which is another Grant Morrison book. Oh, I see why I think it's two books. It's because I got two books. Oh, look, they gave me 247s. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so, very odd, very odd. But, uh, uh, yeah, so I got, I wonder how they put this box together. They just had a stack, stack of stuff. Another Hawk and Dove. So let's just plow through. This is another very good cover. This is like, it looks like it's from my era. Uh, 75 cents. So yeah, this is, this is probably when DC wasn't as good. I think DC, like I haven't read too much from this era, but I really like the early 2000s and whatnot. So here you have uh, Aquaman and uh, his girlfriend, who I forget her name, though I've seen her in a lot of books, and he looks very happy. Then you have all these people on the sides. And it reminds me a lot of like a Marvel Avengers book that I read in the late 80s or early 90s or something. So you have all the characters there. And I'm talking too much about that. Let's just, let's just try to get this box done because there's a lot in here. Another JSA. Oh, there's Power Girl, Superman, and it must be a Thanksgiving issue. There's the Adam. Uh, Robin, is it? I'm not sure. Uh, and... Uh, uh, yeah, so this one is again, this is from January of 04. So DC still had this logo then. Like, they've changed their logo like uh, quite a bit more since I've been paying more attention. So here we go. This one is a dollar, so probably the 90s Aquaman. That's kind of a nice cover. It's not great. 
Um, here we go, another countdown. So it's kind of cool. I got a couple of countdown books in here. I've been very interested in this series because, let's be honest, um, Final Crisis doesn't make any sense. So I was hoping if I read Countdown to Final Crisis, it would make some sense. Here's another flash, two of seven. It's a Grant Morrison. Oh, the Final Crisis. So speak of the devil. So. Yeah, I, I wonder if it would have made more sense if I would have read it in copies when it came out. Now this is, I don't know, this is a 1989 annual of the Justice League. Now it's kind of cool, but I also think it's too busy. If I was a kid, I would not like this because I like the more, like I even like this more modern cover better than, than this cover. But uh, I'm also being hit by waves of nostalgia and... For whatever reason, I still kind of like it. But as a kid, I wouldn't have liked it. I would have passed that up because it just, I don't know, it's just too busy. Here we go. We've got Supergirl Action Comics, and she's reproducing Superman's first pose, which I don't remember if he had a cape in that one. So what does it say? Funeral for a friend, too. So I've actually read this, and that's not really Supergirl. That would be Matrix Supergirl, who I think is an alien... I, I don't really know the full story on that. I asked when, when I first started getting back into comics, but nobody could explain it to me. They've probably explained it since, but here we go. The Flash. This is kind of a nice cover. I'm not sure what's going on, but it has sort of a Lawrence of Arabia feel with that. It, look, it reminds me of Sand, which it might be Sand. So 235, this is from 08, so this is few years before the new 52 and let's just go let's just go this is a nice cover um the legionnaires don't know anything about them um yeah i think that's a guy who is like on the teen titans and he could change into different things but i don't really know brainy you can't quit the legionnaires so we have melodrama because someone wants to quit the legionnaires ah here we go, another Marvel book. We have Thor, and this is like some of the worst artwork I've ever seen. But, you know, I don't know. Thor's face looks kind of crushed in, and he's being struck by lightning, which is cool. So this is Marvel6.com, rated T for T. Oh, it's written by Ma uh, Michael J. Straczynski of uh, Babylon 5 fame. So not sure who the artist is. Cool. Well, I don't know, but we have to keep going. Then we have the Silver Surfer, Marvel Comics. Let's see. This is Comics Code. It's 104 from May of some year. That's kind of a cool cover. This is, um, let's see, the cover price. Cover price. This was 150 so it's like probably 93 94 And you can kind of tell they've gone away from the uh, four-color art. And it's a better art, I guess, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, here we go, another Thor. Is this another Straczynski? Yep, another Straczynski. Um, I think Thor looks better here in that other one. In that other cover, his face looked kind of smooshed together. Another Silver Surfer the, versus the Collection Agency. Don't we all have to verse a Collection Agency at some time in our lives? So, and the universe hangs in the balance. This is the 30th anniversary, 1961 to 1991. So this was like, I bought probably my last Marvel comic for a long time in 1991, and it was an X-Men with the, uh, see this, you can just tell the difference between the art of this one or, or this one, and it's just, I, everything looks, I don't know, uh, everything looks kind of more clear, and I, you know, it's not, everything isn't as blended together. Um, here's another Silver Surfer, number 82 from July. I'm not sure what year, but again, probably early 90s. You've got the Marvel logo there. And I'm at 11 minutes on this video. We're going to power through this. And even if I have to make a third video and edit it together, another Silver Surfer, part four of four, life form. So again, this is, um, yeah, I don't know. This was $2. It's still got the Comics Code Authority. Instead of Spider-Man, you have a Reed Richards down here, so that's interesting. I wasn't reading past that point. Then we have another Black Panther. Black Panther. I really like Wakanda. I'd like to visit there sometime. So, yeah, this is Marvel Knights, so this is probably early 2000s. This was a more adult title. This is uh, 
Marvel Longshot. I, I'm not sure who he is. I think he's an X-Men. Don't really know anything about him. Okay, this looks. Like, this is an older one. See, there's the Spider-Man in the corner, and it's 75 cents. So probably like 88, 89. Um, Onslaught Reborn, Jeff Loeb. So that's kind of a cool cover. Um, so yeah. I, I uh, read the omnibus of Onslaught last summer. I really enjoyed that. That was very good. Daredevil, The Man Without Fear. This is a Civil War tie-in. Red Civil War, just the main arc, and I didn't really like it. So, yeah, this is from um, 2006. Uh, again, another Black Panther. So, this was like a couple of years before the Black Panther movie was going to come out. So, uh, which is coming out sometime next year. I really liked the Black Panther in uh, Civil War, and I remember reading some of his stories when I was a kid, but he was never like a favorite of mine. But I did like him in the uh, lead up to the uh, Earth being destroyed in, um, you know, the lead up to Secret War. Okay, Daredevil, Man Without Fear, an annual, The System Bites, part two. So this is 90s, you know, you got that logo there. That's how I know I'm a fast study. Still have the comic code 225, so this is like part two of uh, some limited series. I'm not sure how much. Guest starring Deathlock. Okay, almost done, guys. I hope you're not totally bored yet. This is, uh, who is this? Speedball. Speedball. This is from the 80s. It's 75 cents. Um, comics code. The artwork is good. I don't know anything. It's a little, it almost looks like it's uh, kids, you know, Back then, I would think this was for kids. It looks a little more cartoony than I normally like, but it's it's a good cover. The Book of Doom. So this is a Doctor Doom book. So yeah, uh, it looks like he's fighting uh, Mr. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, let's just keep moving. Don't have money for comics here. Here's an Avengers book. This is cool. This is 60 cents. So this is probably like 79 or 80. Oh, that, I, I might even have had this book when I was a kid. Anyways, that is artwork. That is like what a comic book looks like. So, you know, it's a graphic novel, man. Oh, The Invincible Iron Man, Marvel's greatest comic. So, yeah, that's kind of good artwork, but, uh, you know. Then we got another Iron Man on back, which might be the next issue. Let's see, this one is number one. Oh, it's a free, so this is probably a free comic book day issue. I'm not sure when that started, probably 2006 or so. Here's another Avengers from the 90s, dollar. So this is probably like uh, 89 or 90, not exactly sure. Still kind of a cool artwork. Uh, everything looks um, simpler and uh, more fun. Here's a Spider-Man, the thousand, the thousand number one. This is a very cool looking cover. Um, but yeah, we're almost done, guys. So let's just plow through um, the American Dream. So it looks like uh, Captain America is a girl. DeFalco, Nock, and Koblish in a row. So this is three of five, Hulk. It looks like it's from 2008. So don't know anything about this. Never heard of it. Uh, here's another good Avengers one. You can tell because it has the guys in the corner, Comics Code Authority. It's a pretty good artwork, you know. You got the two guys in the center you're supposed to focus on, and you have the Avengers in the background. Who leads the Avengers? The Avengers. The Avengers. Then on the back, you have Chips Ahoy commercials. So I used to like Chips Ahoy. I don't eat that stuff anymore. Don't eat anything your body doesn't need. Your body needs beer, especially IPA. Captain America, Acts of Vengeance. Okay, this is still like from late 80s, early 90s. I can't remember exactly when comic books went to a dollar, but um, that's pretty good artwork. I like that a lot. So it looks like Magneto, Captain's greatest foe, the Red Skull, defeated by Magneto. So Magneto, see if you look at this, what this is telling you is Magneto is Archangel Michael because you've got sort of the figure Mark, uh, uh, Michael is always depicted standing on the head of Satan. So in here he's uh, standing on the head of the Red Skull. So, and probably around this time, Magneto was still a good guy. I am not really sure. I do remember when he was put on trial. 
Uh, you know, that's what I was reading more sporadically, but that was a good arc from what I can remember. And uh, so another Spider-Man, yeah, that's, um, that doesn't really do much for me. That's from 96. Siege, that was an event just a few years ago, so like around, I don't know, 2006, 2008, not exactly sure. And I want to keep going, so. But that's kind of cool artwork. Spider-Man, Marvel 25th anniversary, 75 cents. So let's see, so this would be 1986. 1986 was a pretty good year too. 80s were great. Let's see, don't let anybody fool you. And then we have this, this is the last one, the sensational Spider-Man. So the secret of Gaunt. Huh. See, this is from December 96, and it's number 11. So, this is, like, just really cool, really cool amount of books. And, like, you know, I didn't pay too much for them. So, you know, I can always just cut them up and use them for art or whatever. So, uh, thank you for watching. Happy birthday, Cat Jack Kirby. This probably won't go up tonight. It's already getting pretty dark. And I've enjoyed making this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Please subscribe and like. And um, look for my next video, which will probably be more omnibus related. I'm not on any schedule yet. I just, like, yeah, I just, yeah, never mind. Let's just go out because we are talking like 40 minutes, over 40 minutes of video if I can edit these two together. So, again, thank you for watching. Bye.